start out here. This is Damian Macy representing the Friends of the Marshall Public Library. And today, which is September the 11th, 2019, I'm at the residence of Rosa Lee Smith. And also, she has some family here with her. I'm her niece, Sharon Greenlee. My mother and Rosa Lee were sisters. Okay. And this is my husband, Harry Greenlee. Okay. And it's good having you with us. And with that, we'll kind of get started, Rosalie. I think you have probably got some history that many people are not aware of. So with that, you might just kind of start out if you'd like to introduce your family, who your parents were, where you lived, and then just kind of tell about your early family life. Okay. Uh, I was born on the Denison Road. There used to be a house there, it's gone now. But that's where I was born. And then we moved up there by the cemetery, the Versailles Cemetery. On the corner there used to be a house and we um, lived there until Mom and Dad bought this. And for some reason, uh, a guy came up to our house and we lived up there by the cemetery and asked Dad, if you'd like to buy this, because he already owned 80 acres back here. Ooh. And uh, he said he sure would, because it joined his land. And uh, so that's how we ended up getting this house. But uh, when I read the abstract and deed and stuff, it never says anything about uh, Franklin Walsh uh, lived here at that time and so dad bought it and that was uh, in 1947. Rosalie you mentioned Denison and at that time could you tell me a little bit about what was in Denison were there some stores and uh, maybe how many houses there might be churches or anything? Uh, I didn't hear all that. When you lived in Denison, could you just tell me a little bit about the community? Were there some churches and houses and things like that there? How many people live there? Well, I don't know for sure how many live there. I remember one night I went to a, when I was a teenager, went to a box supper over there and the girls were make real pretty boxes and decorate them and put the oh make sandwiches and stuff and people would bid on the boxes which one was the prettiest and <laughs> stuff like that and it, it was a, a fun time. I don't think there were too many more in Denison back then than there is now. Oh okay. But I haven't been over at Dennis in a long time. But our address at one time, I think, was Denison. Yes. They still have a Route 1 Denison. That's where uh, Trudy Wilson lives. Hmm. They get their mail up to Denison. Yeah, I think there's still a Denison address. I don't think the post office operates there anymore, but there's still a Denison address. Yeah. Well, anyway, you got back, you were living here and moved here? And yeah, we moved here in 1947 or 8, I'm not sure which. Because that's the year I started high school. I'll bet there was not any school bus stopped out here either, was there? There wasn't any school buses yet then. We had this um, room in town with somebody. Just come home weekend. So... Where did you go to grade school? Well, I started up here at Sassafras. You know where that's at? Not exactly, but I've heard of it. My yes, mother was an elementary teacher for years. Yeah, it was uh, right up here. It's, it's a yellow house now. A lot of people don't even know it's a, oh. 
it was a school. And then we moved over west of Oliver a few miles and I went there until I was in the seventh grade. And then we moved back over here <laughs> and I graduated from Sassafras. And, uh, I started there and I graduated from there but there's about six or seven years in between. So, Could you tell me a little bit about your school day and the what? Sassafras? Could you tell a little a bit about your school day, what you did, what you learned when you were at Sassafras? Yeah, uh, we went to Sassafras. There wasn't, there was only three kids in my class. <laughs> and uh, uh, that one teacher taught the whole school. Mm -hmm. But that was a year we had a old maid teacher and we found out she was on drugs. Wow. That's the first I ever knew about drugs. Huh. Even back then, huh? Uh-huh. And she <laughs> rode over from Terre Haute on the bus and um, then she had, uh, what was I gonna say? She's talking about her doing drugs. Yeah, yeah, one day, she, Mrs. Carpenter, Johnny Carpenter's wife, always brought their kids to school and she noticed she was stumbling around Goodness. and her eyes looked funny. So she reported it to the directors. Used to you had three directors that uh, oh, made the decisions for the school mm -hmm. and so this lady that brought her kids to school noticed there was something really wrong with her. And so I lost out on a, a lot of my grades back then because uh, she would lay down and tell us kids to just go and uh, sit <laughs> different places and, and draw. Later on, I was kind of an artist, so I think it started way back then. <laughs> so I, was, I painted a lot. She, she was a good artist. She does a lot. Did a lot of nice paintings. I did that one. Ooh, neat! Mm -hmm. But I also sold mine or gave them away. I don't have too many of them. So, what about lunch? I'm sure there was no cafeteria. No lunch service. Did you take a sack lunch from home, or did we able to go home for lunch? We took a, took a sack lunch. All except there was one family that they said if they took the food home, their dad would eat it. <laughs> so their um, oldest sister, teacher, kind of nod her head, and she'd go back to the back to the school and make the kids sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly and stuff. That wasn't spoiled. And uh, so, had a one room big furnace in the front. So, I don't know if I can tell you much more than that about sassafras. A lot of people don't know it was ever a school. What did you do at recess? Recess, we played Kick the can. <laughs> uh, in the winter, if we were, had a path of going out to the well, we would pour it full of water and let it uh, freeze, and then in the winter we could skate on it. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a little different. Gosh. Did the students help bring in like coal for the stove and take out ashes, or did the teacher do that? Well, Usually the teacher did it, or one of the uh, board of directors. One of them lived very close to the school up here. Okay. But uh, I don't remember the teachers or directors. I think the teacher just made the decisions for over at Providence was the other school I went to. Okay down to the 
Oh, Vale Ridge Road. What road? Vale Ridge Road. Vail Ridge. Oh, yes. Um, he, he would take it, clear over to a crossroads, and then you turn south just about a block, maybe, and there was where the school was. Okay. Well, of course, it's all gone now. I'm sure. Her mom and dad lived right there by the Four Corners. Yes. That's where I was born and grew up. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to a one-room school too? I did, but in Edgar County. Oh, okay. On the Asher and Conmog. Okay. Then, then went to Crestwood when it was built. Started there in mm -hmm. fifth grade. My mother always said she enjoyed teaching so much and she liked some of the days of the one-room school the very best. And she felt students there many times got a better education because as kids graduated or moved up, they'd already heard a lot of the things from recitations of the older kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably right. Well, but we just played games usually at Recess, we call it. <laughs> but again, I think people at that time and that age use their mind more than they do today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from there, then you went to Marshall schools. I didn't go to Marshall school till I was a freshman in high school. Okay. And you stayed in town then, for yeah. Okay. I had to stay in town. Ruin board. <laughs> Just come home weekends. Were you able to rent what, like a room in someone's house? Yeah. Was that near the high or near the school? No, I'm not too close to the school. When we graduated, there was just three of us. Uh, we were standing in front of the school. And they told us they wanted us to go visit high school. But we went out in front and there was nobody there. And we didn't know what to do. And there came Maxine Feltz. You probably heard of her. And uh, her sister Norma. Okay. Yeah. And a friend of theirs. And they seen us standing out there looking like a country bumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> which we which we was, <laughs> and so them girls were so nice. They each one took one of us girls, and took them to classes all day with them. Okay. Yeah, I knew Norma and uh, Maxine both pretty well. Yeah, Maxine took me. I I loved that till the day she died. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what was your favorite? School? subject in high school? History. And I'm going to ask you the reverse. What did you like the least? The least? One school teacher I had. <laughs> I could go stand with my nose in the corner. Uh oh. <laughs> I assumed you were probably a good girl all the time. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I did back then to have to stand the corner. But was there a subject that you didn't really like? Oh, I think it was for whisper or something like that. Was there some subject in school like math or English or something that you did not like? I didn't like math. Okay. <laughs> that was not my favorite subject. Now I know that was in the old high school that was destroyed or damaged in a tornado. What yeah. do you remember about that school? What? What do you remember about the school building itself? The old one or the new one? The old one. Well the old one was two or three stories high. It, yeah. it wasn't uh, low like that one. Right. That one, the year I was a freshman, was the first year they moved into the new school. 
We think it's new school. Of course, we still got the same doors. I think I had one. We went that year. So, were you the first one well, of the first classes then in the new school? Oh, I think there was some classes before. Okay. Because uh, Maxine was a senior, and she took me to the classes with her. So I think that had school a few years. Um, on our class rings, we had uh, 1951. That was the year we graduated, and had the doors of the new school and 1951 on the sides. They didn't have sets and stuff in them like they have now. So, but I had, I had a good time going to high school. Are there any activities that you participated in, like any music or uh, maybe art? I don't know as I, I liked art the best. Still do. <laughs> Did they have an art class then? I was not even sure. No, they, they didn't know. have an Probably art class not. there. Okay. If they had them, I might have been a good artist. <laughs> you were a good artist. <laughs> so, still would be if you could see better. So you graduated in 1951. Right. Well, you're not too far ahead of me. I graduated in 1956, but from Marksville. Well, the uh, memories that you have of high school did, and I know they didn't have a cafeteria at that time, I don't think. No, we went uptown. You went uptown for lunch? Okay. They had an hour of lunch and we went uptown and there were several stores there. We could get us a sandwich or whatever we decided we wanted that day, I guess. Maybe even Tom's restaurant? What? Did you ever go to Tom's? Tom's restaurant. Oh, Tom's. Yeah. yeah that was where the candy kitchen was. No, yeah. it, was, it was in the next block over east. Uh-huh. Tom, the guy that had Tom's also at one time owned the candy kitchen. Yeah. It's part of the same family. Yeah. I, I didn't go to Tom's too much. I went to E and L. Did you ever hear of it? Oh, I sure do. Sometimes we'd go to McNulty's. It was a huh. grocery store, but you could get stuff for a sandwich and things like that. What do you remember about McNulty's? I have a good memory of that place. What's that? What do you remember about McNulty's? Well, it was a, a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I remember on Saturday nights after we got a car, <laughs> we didn't have no car when I first started. And uh, so on Saturday night, mom and dad would take their cream and eggs to a place that well, that kind of stuff. And then after we got paid for our eggs and cream, why we went and bought groceries. So I doubt you can buy groceries now that cheap. <laughs> the thing I remember about McNulty's is my grandparents lived just a few blocks away. So if I was visiting them lots of times I would be able to walk over there. And I remember a dime I could buy a candy bar and a soft drink. <laughs> they were each a nickel. It didn't have any change left, but at least you could get both of those for 10 cents. Go under those days. Yeah, right. So you was raised in town. Yes. And I was a country girl. What, uh, I guess you mentioned country girl, and I think that's a good point. What, did you live on a farm? Yeah. Did you have to help with the farm chores? Oh. Not a lot. I never could squeeze them. <laughs> Tits on a cow, I never could get hardly any stream. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had cows 
Well, Dad still had cows when he, we lived here, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Sharon got me that picture. This is my niece, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I and like she, that picture. I've never seen that. My dad had a great team of horses. And so last year for Christmas, she got me that great team. It looked just like Dad. That's neat. Their names were Dick and Dan. Okay. Yep, Dick and Dan. My stuff, my wife still remembers her dad had a team of harpists and she remembers what their names were too. Mm -hmm. And she said they cried when they sold them. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa had Doc and Tom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we didn't have school buses, so uh, school don't really. I was having a big battle over there at Denison because some wanted the school buses and some didn't. <laughs> so I kind of had a brawl over there one night over that. Because some didn't want to move on, and some did. <laughs> but they finally moved forward with buses, didn't they? Yeah. Buses went out. So. You mentioned uh, you graduated in 1951. What happened then? After that? Mm -hmm. I got married. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, it seems like that's what you did, mostly. Graduate from high school and get married. That was pretty typical. Yeah. But we ran off and got married. I went to Pocahontas, Arkansas. <laughs> That's neat. Several people had went down there. It's just sort of a fad, so we thought we had to go do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever go back there later? Yeah, we took Mom and Dad down there later to show them where we got married. So, Dad, he he was really happy because he thought that uh, cotton, they talked like Arkansas, didn't have much of anything in it. And he thought that that cotton was just all right. You know? So, they fla planted rice, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of rice even today. Yeah. Well, Dad wanted to go then. He wanted to go see the... Oh, them horses in the bluegrass country. The race horses. Okay. He wanted to go see them, so we went down seeing the stables and everything. So... Then uh, we got, went to Evansville, and Mom says, well, I got a cousin here in Evansville, somewhere. So, we decided to stop and look her up. And that was Susie's mom. Mm -hmm. Our cousin, I guess, down the line, mm -hmm. still lives in Evansville. That's what I was wondering, if you still have family there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So <coughs> she comes up every once in a while. And we just talk and go see things, and <laughs> that's good. They can tell you more about that because they went on their grandson's uh, honeymoon with them, <laughs> and they ended up in Evansville Labor Day weekend. Yeah, they have chalets there in Evansville in yeah. Burnett Park, and. We had a chalet for a couple of nights, and the nice. newlyweds got the upstairs, and us old folks took the downstairs and cooked out on the grill <coughs> on the deck, <coughs> and uh, could cook in the kitchen, and we didn't oh, have nice. to eat meals out. It was a lot, lot less expensive that way. Oh my gosh, yes. That's, uh, the uh, a good time. Uh, well, it's a. Uh, I forget what they called it now. They had a. Uh, is a casino boat. Oh yes. This brought so much attention in the last few years into Evansville. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, was that the in boat, operation then? The boat is gone, but it's in a building now. Okay, I wasn't in sure the, that. So, and they have the LST 
down there that was a warship. Oh, and yes. uh, it, but it was out somewhere else too, so we didn't get to go see it last time it was down there. I but, could uh, not believe how many uh, <clears throat> of those boats that uh, and it hauled an awful lot as big as it was. Mm -hmm. Of the little boats that um, I guess they just went from there to Normandy or wherever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those boats had origination back in World War Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And were very, very urgent and important then. Yeah, this one did. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We did not start out with your maiden name or your parents' name. When I got married? You no, know, your mother and dad's name. Mauer. Oh, M-A-U-E-R? M-A-U-R. M-A-U-R. E-R. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a Mauer. You probably know some of that. <laughs> and so, what was your dad's first name? Wilbur, but nobody Wilbur. ever called him that. <laughs> Buck. They always called him Buck. 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 Okay. <laughs> Yeah, even got a buck on his tombstone. So. <laughs> I don't think anybody really knew what his name was. <laughs> and how about your mother's name? My what? Your mother's name. Sean. Catherine. Catherine. Okay. Now you had some brothers and sisters? <laughs> yeah. About nine of them. Wilbur was the, no, Irene was the oldest. Mm -hmm. And then her mom, well, there's a girl in between there that died from scarlet fever. Mary. And her mom. Maybell. Maybell. Mm -hmm. And then my oldest brother was Wilbur, too. Uh, we called him Junior. And uh, then, who was it next? But. Bud? I think so. Bud. No, nobody ever called him, but uh, his name really wasn't Bud, it was Harold, but <laughs> nobody ever called him that. And yeah. then, after Bud? Betty. Betty. And then me. And I'm the last one. No. No, well, you're the last one left. But what? You're the only one left, but there was Bob and Dean. Yeah, after that's you. right. Bob and Dean was younger than me. Mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the days when you were all together in a family house? That could be quite a household to try to f cook for, take care of, washing, laundry, and everything. Yeah. Us kids hated that old rockabye Roy. You know what that is? No. 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 <laughs> it was a sort of a thing like that made out of wood and had the handle come up like that. Okay. And we called it chugging. Mom would have us to push that thing up and down. <laughs> That was an early washing machine, really, wasn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was better than a, bo a board. <laughs> Wash board. Not a, not a whole lot. <laughs> but us kids hated it because we, instead of uh, going and playing while we had a chance, <laughs> we'd sit and count and make sure that whoever was washing before us got enough. <laughs> <laughs> to get things clean, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when, do you recall what year you first got electricity? Yeah. Uh, we got electricity when uh, we moved here. We didn't have electricity up there by the cemetery. We had to pay for it back then if we wanted it brought back. Mm -hmm. Like to the curb there with the cemetery, we didn't have electricity till we moved in here. Cause I remember going and turning on the switches, 
<laughs> that was a new experience, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how did getting, I assume you got a refrigerator, and you had a washing machine, maybe it was electric. How did that change your thoughts and your process about, hey, how are we living? Yeah, because I, that washing on that thing, it just wasn't much fun. <laughs> then we got, uh, when we lived back at Lanham Cemetery, um, one day Mom told Bob, my brother was just younger than me, did you know Bob? Bob, Bob Maurer? Mm -hmm. Bob, Bob Maurer? Yes. He was my brother. And uh, Mom sent him out to fill a, uh, a washing machine with kerosene. And she had a, a old stove in there she heated her water in. <laughs> And all at once, that uh, electric jumped over, uh, you know, and got on fire, worked the smokehouse down, <laughs> and uh, it got on Bob's leg, and his running around the back of the house, and I don't know how I knew, because I wasn't that old, but I, I started screaming, lay down, lay down, because he was a running, and that was just making, making the it worse. flames worse. Yeah. So uh, then the next place we lived was here, and I was still here. All my brothers and sisters have died. Well, you've got some fond memories, though, of oh yeah, that, sure. Uh huh. After you uh, after you got married, where did you settle down and uh, live? Out there in that store building. Okay. <laughs> when we first got married, I anyway, Dad had just built that room on the back. It was a little filling station. Right next door here. Uh huh. I can remember even when it was a gas station. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago, but. I know. Oh, they, uh, Junior. Oldest brother, he had a little kind of grocery store in with a, a grocery store and gas. And then he had to go to Korea. Ooh. And mom and dad didn't really want to mess with it anymore. <laughs> so they closed it. So did you ever operate it as a gas station? Maybe I remember it more as a grocery or a convenience type of store then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I pumped, uh, I remember pumping gas a guy. <laughs> gas tank. And I forgot to put the lid back on. Uh -oh. And here come the guy back, he was madder than a devil. But I left that. <laughs> Gas cap off. <laughs> Do you by any chance remember what the price of a gallon of gas was at that time? I don't remember. We used to have a sign years ago out back of that building. Well, my brother Dean is still living. He's always lived over here. He remembers more because I moved off. <laughs> As I know, it was a lot smaller than it is today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can even remember when it was 19 cents a gallon when I was in high school. When I was in college, there was a price war in mm. Terre Haute that got down to 12 cents. Mm. Oh, my. Driving was a pleasure then. Right. <laughs> oh, my. I didn't know where I learned to drive. Out there in that pasture. There's a house there now. Mm. But that's how I learned to drive circles, round and round, and of course I had to shift gears. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drive this easy for what it was then. Do you recall what type of car, or what kind of car it was? Not exactly, but it wasn't a Model T, but it's one after that. I don't know. 
I think the Model A came after the T. Did it? I think so. Well, we, we didn't get a car though till Junior, my oldest brother learned to drive. And uh, we'd always just had the horses. Mm -hmm. But uh, we graduated to the car, and that's when we started going to town on Saturday night to make novelties. And uh, Dad would always take us before we came home to Rattie Makers. Oh, yes. And I love the ice cream. What? I loved the ice cream. Oh, yeah. And we'd get a little bowl of ice cream, and they had different flavors you could pour over it. And Dad would always take us there and get us a scoop of ice cream in a little bowl. And we'd put strawberry syrup or, or whatever kind we wanted. Do you remember other businesses that were around the town town? Well, let me see. Western Auto. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they used to be at Kroger. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, the Kroger store was in where the library is now. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I remember that. So, we would walk uptown for lunch, get us something at one of the stores that was uptown. You didn't walk into town from here, though, did you? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Although I remember L.A. Rhodes, every Saturday, you see, she lived back this road up here, goes back. You'd see her and all of her girls, the girls, she had a bunch of girls, they'd be walking into town. They always walked it. That would be a good hike. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Well, I walked to town quite a bit from my work and mom and dad's. What? I said I walked to town quite a bit from over there where mom and dad lives, which is just not very far from there. But I'd go down the railroad track. Not safe, probably, but safe, shorter. <laughs> well, back then, back then, there wasn't too many fast trains. <laughs> oh, why? But you could. It, Running all, at an angle right through there to town. I remember Mom talking about walking down the railroad to school. But, uh, there was a school and a schoolhouse at Spike Town then. Uh, my mother, I remember telling about teaching at Spike Town, and she taught at the English school, which was up here on Route One. Yeah. Uh huh. So she taught several schools. I don't remember all the names, but she used to pretty well remember them when she taught there. Yeah. So you obviously had a hobby of art or interest in painting or drawing and stuff. Oh. When did that develop in grade school? In? What? When did you first start with an interest in art in grade school? Yeah. I'd be sitting drawing pictures of different ones. One girl, she was always poison for me. Um. She would sit real still and I'd draw her picture. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how we grew up and look, look, look back and uh, see um, where you was headed for, really? If you liked art or history or, you know. So when did you start with the more advanced artwork? Art? Oh, I can't tell you. We just, uh, like I say, we had that one teacher that just let us go out and sit in the yard and draw. Now you went to college for art. Oh, yeah. I did go to college for arts over at Lakeland. Oh. Okay. 
So, and we didn't just paint fixtures, we melted gold and teacher showed us how to make it rain, hmm. how to melt that down. It's funny, I sat with the teachers because all the other kids my age, uh, they was my age, you know, mm -hmm. so I'd eat lunch over like with some of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you went to college at a later age. Yeah. How, how old were you when you went to college? 1980. 1980. That's a year ago, the divorce. Mm -hmm. How I remember it. <laughs> so. I don't know if you remember the name Ruby Cronk. What? Do you remember the name Ruby Cronk? Yeah. She I, had an art studio downtown for a while. Uh huh. And my mother took lessons from her when she was, I think, 76. My goodness. And she loved to paint too. She yeah. had some nice things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you still, was that in oils? Yeah. Did you ever do anything with watercolor? I tried it, but that's hard to it's do. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> what about acrylics? Did you do any acrylics? Or did you just do I tried it, but uh, that runs too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like the oil because you could be painting on it and have to go do something else, you could come back but and it's still wet. Mm -hmm. You could go on, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Do you still do anything with art? No. I can't see you well enough. She has macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. and mm, so tough. her eyesight's pretty bad now. Now, does Juanita do acrylics? Oh, oil. She has, but she she likes oil. Mm -hmm. What? She likes oils. Uh huh. That's I, my sister. She okay. paints too. She's okay. an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming I got to the I family got, then, huh? Not not me. It left <laughs> left me out. <laughs> yeah. Her um, well, sister better artist than me. I don't know about that, but she's good. You both are good. I like music, and someone says something up to my wife, do you like music? She says, yeah, but the only thing I play is the radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. In high school, and then after you got married, are there some things in history, things that happened in the world, that really influenced you, or you really remember? Oh. Um. I remember the day Kennedy was killed. Uh, we had a preacher at our house, and that come on. We had a radio, didn't have a TV, and uh, he sat there and cried. He said, "I thought we was more civilized than that." <laughs> but it happens a lot anymore. And of course, today is the anniversary of the 911 airplanes in the Trade Center in New York. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of things on the news. Mm -hmm. I guess the 18th, 18th anniversary of that. Yeah. Uh, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that was quite a day. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go see that show that they made of 911? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Well, they have a movie. I, I, I imagine it's just pretty well like it was because people were running and screaming. And <laughs> oh. I I'm saw back. some of the news, I guess pitch pieces of the news from time to time, but I didn't realize they had made a complete episode of it. Oh my, yeah. And of course, now you have to be careful if you're in school, even they <laughs> Shoot them up at school. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, yeah. Pretty sad. Pretty sad. But at Kennedy assassination is something that they say just about everyone remembers where they were and what they were doing. Yeah. When they heard that. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I don't remember where and where I was that day. I think most people do mm -hmm. that are, are older. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was given a bath. I don't remember if she was here or help me. Somebody was. I have a boy that's an invalid. And several people come up in the morning and help me, give him a bath. Okay. But he's at the nursing home now. Yes, 9-11, I, I was here that morning because I didn't know anything about it until I got here and you had heard it on the radio or TV or something and told me about it when I first came to the door. You said, did you hear what had happened? And that's the first I heard about it That's when I came here. Well, when I looked up, I seen that one plane. It looked like it was headed for the buildings. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, then just a second later, here comes this other plane. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, think most well, people thought the first one was simply an accident. Uh -huh. You know, they got off track or something. But then when that second one hit, that was mm -hmm. yeah, not an accident by any means. Mm -hmm. So then I just turned to the news and watched it out that day. Mm -hmm. Probably from the rest of the day on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've all got so many modern conveniences, and you mentioned first getting electricity, flipping that switch. What modern conveniences do you have that you would not want to live without? Uh, what? What modern convenience would you not want to give up? Electricity. Because it runs everything. Okay. Yeah, it seems like power goes off the first thing you do is go into another room and you flip the switch. <laughs> I wonder why it doesn't. It doesn't work doesn't there work. either. <laughs> and today, the electric doors on the grocery store don't open. Mm -hmm. Even if you did get in, no one knows what the price of anything is. It's all computerized. So you're, you're right on. I think electricity just controls almost our life. Mm -hmm. Maybe too much. Yeah. Yeah, I said I've lived through all the different, uh, oh, what do I want to say, uh, went from wagon, we never had a buggy, we just had a wagon and horses, and until uh, we got that car, mm -hmm. then the junior Drive it. He was only 14. I let him drive back then. So. We enjoyed going to town. <laughs> then it went to airplanes and outer space travel and you would lived through a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember going to the old Strand Theater for movies? Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought about that for a long time. It weren't. Sure did. Because we used to go to the movies out there every Saturday night. And do you remember the, uh, oh, they call them cereals? On Saturday, they usually had something that left you up in the air and the mystery. So the only way you'd find out would be to go back the next Saturday to find out how it came out. <laughs> Continued. <laughs> you continued is right. <laughs> they always had a way of catching you even back then. And then a Come in. Come in, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi there. Hello. Uh, this is another Sharon. Yeah. Oh, hi there. Hi. My name's Damian Macy from the Marshall Library. Okay. We're we're doing an interview here um, for historical purposes. Okay. And this is her health care worker. Oh, okay. We're pretty well about to wind up, so don't... Oh, we're fine. Okay. No. She hasn't mentioned anything about her children yet. No, that's was going to be one of my questions. Mm -hmm. She oh. has seven. Had seven. She's lost two sons. Seven children. Well, that was... You had a house full in yourself, too, even, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm 
Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about keeping house and taking care of seven kids? <laughs> that was a joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you this one, it's funny. When we lived up there on the hill, there was the cemetery. Um, Mom had saved a plate of food for my brother Rob, because he wasn't done working on the field, you know, till later. And uh, Betty had just mopped the kitchen, my sister Betty. And Bud was going to go there and get his dinner, and she says, no, you're not. She grabbed that plate of food and threw it out in the yard. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Her, her and Bud never did get along too good. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the war was on then. <laughs> uh, that make your blood pressure go right up, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Well, Bud and Betty never did get along too good. But shoot, I went to town after we got that car. Bud and Millie. Have you interviewed Millie Maurer? No, I don't think I did, no. no. Mm -mm. She lives in Marshall. Okay. And she's 86. 88. 88? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's a year older than me. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. She lives in Marshall. So with those seven kids, how did you keep them all fed, clothed, and behaving? Well, it was uh, different. We had a creek right behind our house. Or uh, not my house, the barn. And we played in that creek a lot. <laughs> First arrowhead I ever found was down in that little creek. Hmm. It looked just like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. I took it to the house and Bob was with me. Said, uh, "Look, we found this little Christmas tree, and it was an arrowhead. Yeah, right. That's the first one I ever found." <laughs> oh. Well, your your seven must have been quite a household to take care of, though, too. Your seven children. Oh, what about them? I say they must have been quite a household to try to take care of. Yeah. Keep food on the table and keeping clothes and keeping schools and all of that. Oh yeah. That was quite a uh, ordeal. I didn't know we had school buses. So did you have a big garden to keep oh, food yeah, on the table? We always had a big garden. And we canned a lot. Hmm. She was a stay at home mom. For the most part, until she was older. So, what, you didn't work out until you was in Nebraska, did you? What? You didn't work away from home until you moved to Nebraska, did you? Uh-uh. I didn't think so. And no. you haven't said anything about moving to Nebraska. Yeah. That's a long way away. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah. Our husband was a pastor. We moved out there to preached at that church in Laurel. What was the town in Nebraska? Laurel? Laurel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds, sounds kind of familiar. Laurel, Nebraska. Was it a small town? Yeah, about a thousand. Okay. So, what was your favorite memory about Nebraska? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Twyla, she, she didn't like to be told much, and uh, she went to school one day, and she had a patch. That was back when uh, everybody wore them jeans and had patches all over. <laughs> and she had a big patch. I called her to the office, and so they Told her to 
Well, there's always been kind of outspoken. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong with that. <laughs> so, how long did you live in Nebraska? Five years. So five years. And then, did you move back to the Marshall area from there? Yeah, 71. So, did you like Nebraska better than Illinois? Oh, not particularly. Your preacher's wife, you live there, you live there. <laughs> well, Rosalie, it's been a delight visiting with you. What? It's been a real delight visiting with you. Well, I don't do it. I appreciate your comments. And uh, I guess one thing I usually kind of end up the interviews with, let's say you were back in Nebraska today, and someone says, where do you live? And you said, Marshall, Illinois. What would you tell them about Marshall and why it might be a good place to visit or live? I like the flags all over. Cold in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, it was. So long, too. Nights you couldn't even start to get to the grocery store. So, everybody that used to go to the uh, grocery store would buy a ton of groceries because they didn't want to get out of food out there. It's a lot of wide open space. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add to our discussion here? Well, she didn't mention her kids' names. No. You want to know what her kids' names were? You might do that. Okay. Lois is the oldest. And who? Vern. Yeah. You said Vern? Vern. 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 live close except Twyla lives in the open so she doesn't get over to visit real often once a month or maybe a little more often than that. And the two of the girls live in Paris. Oh that's not far away. Yeah, not too far away and then Juan lives in Marshall. So Juan comes every night to make sure she has her medicine and her supper and Harry and I come every day and bring her lunch and make Great. sure she has her medicine. It's so. kind of unusual because in today's families, they just get so scattered out so fast that many times you don't have any direct relatives living close by. Mm -hmm. So you're fortunate. Yes. Very yes. fortunate. Yeah, phone coming out about every night. She reads to it. Yeah, she's been reading books to it. She comes out and reads two or three chapters just about every night after she oh, reads that's her great. So you read much? I read all the time, yes. <laughs> I love to read. I, I do too, but I can't sleep to do it. And uh, I, I, I like music. I've been a church organist for 71 years, almost 71, and uh, still play two services every weekend. That's great. And I guess maybe that helps keep me alive and keeps going too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that's so I don't paint at all. I couldn't paint. I don't think a picture of anything. But I do sell, I guess, maybe pursue music a lot. So anything that you would care to add? Carrie? No. No. <laughs> well, it's been a delight visiting with you folks also and having you here. And I think you kind of see what our oral history project is about. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to get uh, people to expand a little bit on their life and mm -hmm. what they remember about it. Mm -hmm. And as I tell people, it's more for the future than now because, you know, 10 years, someone's going to say, gee, I didn't know about that about Rosalie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you didn't talk about your time that you spent in Alaska either, oh. and working working on the fishing boat, the fishing ship. Yeah. My goodness, no. That was a very interesting part of her life. Yeah, well, that was nice. Mm -hmm. She cooked on the ship. Wow. So. Was it you know, a fishing boat then? Mm -hmm. It's a mother ship. Mother ship. A mother ship picks up all the. Little ships, please. Takes them into the cannery. Okay. The salmon flow pretty freely up there. What? I so said there's a lot of salmon up there. Oh, yeah. What kind of fish did they mainly have on the boat? Was it salmon or was it something else? Oh, it was, it was salmon mostly. Mostly salmon. Yeah. Yeah. I know you've talked about halibut. Was that on halibut the boat? Halibut was the best fish. That we hauled. She said they were ugly. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I think they are. They, they <laughs> laid on the bottom of the ocean, and when they're born, both their eyes is one side. Oh, on they're on like the ocean area. wave, <laughs> and then they lay on that side till it turns white, and it draws a uh, one eye over. So. Um, then it gets white on the other side. But she said it was really good tasting fish. Mm -hmm. She it's liked the taste of it. She she loves fish anyway. I do too. Um, Most many people don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> so how long were you in Alaska? I was a uh, Ben Lewis went up there a time before. Mm -hmm. I saw sister off. Uh huh. But how long did you? Work how long on the were ship? you working up there in Alaska? How long were you in Alaska working? A couple of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring a big cooler full of fish home. We have a great big fish fry. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, what time of year was it that you were up there? The full year? No, we was up there. We went up in the spring, uh, and. Uh, that's why I thought most people from the states that worked up there, it wasn't for the full calendar year. It was a segment when the weather's a little milder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my husband's cousin or husband, they uh, owned the ship. Oh. So it wasn't like I just went out there among strangers. <laughs> okay. I even drove it sometimes. Jasper was tired get my head getting his bunk behind the where you were driving, take him a little nap and then he's good for a good long while again. So your period of time in Alaska then was after you were married? And divorced. Okay. After her children were grown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a little later then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta be back across the sea, Alaskan Sea, you got to get across that about, oh, this time of year probably. So, before it starts freezing up? No, it's not real cold yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mid-September, mm -hmm. you about have to get out of some of those areas because October, mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. gone, mm -hmm. and ice. Mm -hmm. but I don't know, they keep talking about this global warming warming. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's changed the patterns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't so know. did you like the long, long nights? Or were you there when they had... What's that? Were you there when you had extremely long nights? A lot yeah. of darkness? Yeah. 
But that ain't really that long. It's more like dusk. Yeah. Hell. I would find that, I think, a little depressing or difficult to have that much darkness mm -hmm. <laughs> right one hour after another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you mentioned about uh, about Alaska. That's yeah, I'm that's glad interesting. You did too. I forgot. I forgot that. <laughs> well, it's good you have a cheering section over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, Rosalie, we thank you so much. I appreciate you for your time, and glad to have you folks too. Thank you. And if there's anything we can do anytime, why don't hesitate to say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> if you think of something later and want to want to add to it, yeah. uh, it's kind of add hard to add to the tape, but she can make a note or something in the file. Mm -hmm. And glad you were here. Well, I'm glad. Well, thank you. Yeah,